Okay, we'll go back to the next video, the preceding video from the previous one on finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In this video, we're going to quickly go over, not so quickly, but we're going to go over how to find the solution to the non-homogeneous uh, case, which is where we have this extra uh, kind of term being added to function. Usually it'll be in terms of something simple enough to deal with, usually e to the t polynomials or sines and cosines. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So from the previous video, we know that we have that the solution to the homogeneous system is c1 times this vector e to the negative 3t plus c2 times this vector e to the 2t. With this, we can quickly derive or just extract something called the fundamental matrix, which we will use um, quite frequently, uh, especially in this case for variational parameters, which is kind of the main topic of this video. So in this case, we can quickly get that by, again, multiplying these two. You can imagine it as just multiplying the vector, or, sorry, the function into the vector. Oops. So in this case, you have uh, yeah, so you have that the fundamental matrix, we usually denote it with psi, uh, I believe it is, either psi, psi, or it's not phi, but it's either, I think it's psi, psi, uh, and we know that this is equal to e to the negative 3t, negative 4 e to the negative 3t, and then from here we just have e to the 2t and e to the 2t. So from here, uh, again, I'll remind you of the general formula that we'll use for variation of parameters. We have that our particular solution is going to equal to the fundamental matrix times the integral of the inverse of the fundamental matrix times uh, g dt. Again, g is simply the kind of extra function that is part of the non-homogeneous part. So I usually like computing this in different steps. I'll convert the uh, inverse of g, or sorry, the inverse of our fundamental matrix first, multiply by g, take the integral, and then again multiply back by the fundamental matrix to then get our particular solution. So I'll quickly go over that uh, right over here. So first we want to find the determinants of our uh, cosi, which is again equal to just the typical two by two determinant. So you have e to the negative three t, times e to the 2t minus negative 4 e to the negative 3t times e to the 2t. In this case, this part over here simplifies to e to the negative t. Here we have minus negative 4, so it becomes plus 4. And then again, same here, e to the negative t, which when you collect together, you get 5 e to the negative t. From here, we want to compute the adjoint, which is, again, very simple for the 2 by 2 case, much more complicated for the 3 by 3 case, but you won't really make use of that uh, for systems. You'll mostly do that for when you're just simply trying to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a system for a 3 by 3 case, uh, but mostly just for non-homogeneous, or for, sorry, for homogeneous. So next step, we want to find the adjoint. Uh, fine, and again, we can just compute this directly. So we know that phi, or sorry, because i is right over here. So first we can swap these two elements on the main diagonal. So we have e to the 2t, and then uh, e to the negative 3t. Actually, I'll move this over for some more space. And then right below, we're going to multiply it on the diagonal by negative. And again, that's simply just how you take the adjoint of a uh, 2 by 2. And again, I'll explain that in more detail in another, in another video. Uh, so here we have negative e to the 2t. Okay. So that's the adjoint. And again, we know that uh, phi inverse is equal to 1 over the determinants of phi times the adjoint of phi. Right? And again, both of these we just computed right over here and over here. So we can now put that together. So we have 1 over 5 e to the negative t times the adjoint, which is uh, not that. Uh, sorry, it is this. Uh, let me just check. I think it's the adjoint over here, just making sure. Um, e to the 2t, e to the negative 3t, 4, and negative 2. Yeah, this is correct. Okay. And then from there, we can just multiply this in. So 
here we have effectively, you can imagine it as e to the 2t over this. So we have e to the 2t divided by e to the negative t, which again, if you use your exponent laws, you get e to the 2t minus negative t, which gives you e to the 3t. So here you have 1 over 5 e to the 3t. Here, same idea. You have, uh, except in this case, you have negative 1 over 5 e to the 3t. Uh, just making sure I have that correct. Yes. Here, same idea. You can again imagine multiplying this up here. So you have 4 over 5. And then here you have negative 3t uh, minus negative t. So uh, e to the negative 2t in this case. e to the negative 2t. Uh, and then here we again just have 1 over 5. But same situation, e to the negative 2t, because we need to do negative 3t minus negative t. So negative 2t. And this right here is our, our, our inverted matrix right over here. Let me just verify that just to make sure. Uh, yeah, looks good. So next, we want to compute this part where we multiply uh, the inverse by g. So we have phi inverse times g. And again, as a reminder, g is simply this non-homogeneous part. So we have our matrix right over here. Again, we're multiplying it by g right over here. So what I like to do uh, in this case, again, first of all, keep in mind, this is a two by two matrix. And this right here is just a two by one vector. So what you expect again is a two by one to come out of it, which is what happens in this two by two case with matrix vector multiplication. So what I like doing is to quite literally expand fully. And what this looks like is you'll have e to the negative 2t times 1 over 5 e to the 3t, 1 over 5 e to the negative 2t, plus negative 2, so just minus 2, e to the t, times this portion over here. So negative 1 over 5 e to the 3t. And then 1 over 5 e to the negative 2t. Okay. From here, you can then combine everything into one singular fraction. So, or it's not a fraction, sorry, uh, one singular uh, matrix. So, here again, you have e to the negative 2t times e to the 3t. So, negative 2t plus 3t, which gives you 1 over 5 e to the t. And then, same idea here in the bottom, though, you have 4 over 5. But here you have negative 2t plus negative 2t, so it gives you e to the negative 4t. Over here, we have negative 2 e to the t times this, so we have positive 2 over 5 uh, e to the 4t. And then down here, we have this times our term over here, so minus 2 over 5. We have e to the uh, e to the t times e to the negative 2t, so t plus negative 2t. So we have e to the negative t, in this case over here. And let me just verify that again, just to make sure we are on the right track. Um, yep, looks good. Next step, we want to then integrate this. So we have the integral of phi inverse g dt. This I'll write out in one step. Again, remember whenever we're integrating um, a vector, a matrix, we're just integrating each component. So in this case, we want to integrate here. I won't go over too much of the detail. Hopefully you are able to integrate by now. So you have one over five e to the t plus, again, here you'll have uh, e to the four t, the derivative, you know, is equal to 4 e to the 4t. So you want to figure out how you want to cancel that out, which means you just multiply it by 1 over 4. So again, you have 2 over 20, but again, that's equal to 1 over 10. 10, and then e to the 4t. The bottom, similar idea, except now you have a negative, you're dividing by negative 4 instead, e to the negative 4t, uh, and then plus 2 over 5 e to the negative t. Again, the great thing about this is that you can always check your work. So in this case, if you take the derivative 
of all of these and compare it, you should get back to this step exactly. And just making sure we have everything. We do. Perfect. Now we can almost put everything together. Together, we have that x of p again is equal to phi times the integral of phi inverse g dt. So we can now plug in our known values. So we can go back here to find our value of uh, cosine, which is again our fundamental matrix. And right over here, we solve for exactly the integral of phi inverse times g. I'll employ an identical strategy to what we did previously with uh, multiplying these out just like this, just so our work is super clear. So we again have 1 over 5 e to the t plus 1 over 10 e to the 4t times e to the negative 3t, negative 4 e to the negative 3t. And then plus, again, this times this. So negative 1 over 5 e to the negative 4t plus 2 over 5 e to the negative t. This one's simpler, just e to the 2t and e to the 2t. Very good. From here, we can just expand to get our uh, rows. So we have e to the negative 3t times this. So we have 1 over 5 e, so t plus negative 3t, so t minus 3t, so negative 2t, plus 1 over 10. Here we have 4t times uh, e to the 4t times e to the negative 3t, so e to the 4t plus negative 3t, so just 1 over 10 e to the t. And then from this side over here, we can again multiply things out. But in this case, we have e to the negative 4t, e to the positive 2t. So we end up with e to the negative 2t. So we have negative 1 over 5, e to the negative 2t. And then we multiply e to the 2t by this. So we have plus 2 over 5, and then just e to the t. Uh, it's a little tight, but that's fine. Here, actually, we'll move things up a little bit. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. In the bottom, similar idea, we have negative 4 over 5. Here we have e to the t times e to the negative 3t, which we know is e to the negative 2t. Here we have negative 4 times this over here. So we have negative 4 over 10, which becomes negative 2 over 5. And again, 4t minus 3t. So we have e to the t. And then exact same idea over here. Here we can just copy paste uh, simply because we have this being multiplied by the same thing. So negative 1 over 5 e to the negative 2t plus 2 over 5 e to the t. Okay, just want to confirm that I do have this part down. And it looks like I do. Very good. From here, we can make simplifications wherever possible. So in this first row, we have this and this canceling out. We have 1 over 5 e to the negative 2t, and we have a negative 1 over 5 e to the negative 2t. And in the bottom, we have negative 2 over 5 e to the t, and then positive 2 over 5 e to the negative t. So they cancel out, and that simplifies. The top then becomes the following. Here we have 1 over 10 plus 2 over 5, which is the same thing as 1 over 10 plus 4 over 10. So we have 5 over 10, which is just 1 half, e to the t. And then in the bottom, we have negative 4 over 5 e to the negative 2t minus 1 over 5 e to the negative 2t, which again gives us negative 5 over 5, so just negative 1. So negative e to the negative 2t. Um, just verifying that. Yep, looks good. And then, of course, we can rewrite this now uh, in terms of a vector times the function. So we have one half times one zero e to the t minus zero one e to the negative two t 
And again, if you multiply things back out, you'll get the exact same answer over here. Uh, but yeah, this right here is our particular solution. And then now, again, drum roll please kind of thing. Uh, we can get our general solution. So from here, we can conclude that our uh, general solution is equal to our homogeneous here. Actually, we'll conclude first that this uh, our particular solution here is equal to precisely this. And then we'll just again write it out that our general solution, I usually denote it with something sub g. Oops. And we know this is again equal to our homogeneous, which I will copy down from over here. Plus our particular, which is exactly this right over here. Okay, uh, so again, it's pretty long overall. Uh, if you organize your work a little, little better, you won't take up as much space. Uh, but this is the general idea. And while it is a little tedious and requires a lot of precision, precision and accuracy, I personally think it's much better than undetermined coefficients, where sometimes you have to quote unquote make a choice uh, and it doesn't actually still give you a solution. Whereas this one's kind of like a more robust, legit way of doing things where you'll basically get a decent answer every single time, as long as you do your uh, matrix vector and matrix matrix multiplication uh, correctly. Okay, thank you so much for watching. And sometime later, I'll continue doing other videos on content that I don't think uh, have been covered as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you.